In the previous videos, we took a look at setting keys, uh, working with the timing, and very importantly, working with the spacing. In other words, how the objects move in between the keyframes. Uh, and in doing that, we looked at the graph editor. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a real world example. We're going to animate a bouncing ball. Uh, for that bouncing ball, I'm going to create a sphere, and I think I'll animate it in the front viewport here. First thing I'm going to do is bring it up, let's say, 12 units. Um, I think one other thing I'll do really quickly is change my timeline. Uh, typically, you start on frame one. Uh, but for this example, I'm actually going to start at frame 0. And I'm going to make my animation one second long. So in other words, it'll go to frame 24. So I'm going to uh, make my timeline only 24 frames, or one second. I can do that by grabbing this handle here and moving it to frame 24. You can see how that's zooming in on the timeline here. Uh, or I could also manually input that value here. That way I'm only seeing 24 frames of animation here uh, because that's all we need. It's going to be a one second animation that we'll just want to watch repeating over and over again. Okay, so now that I have my timeline set and I have my sphere selected, I'm going to go to the beginning of my animation, frame zero, and I'll key it by pressing S on my keyboard. Uh, I will go to frame 12. That's where it's going to come down and hit the ground. So I'll key that as well. This is what I have right now. And then I need to have it return back up as it bounces off of the ground. So I'll bring it back up here on frame 24 and I'll key that as well. And let's take a look at our animation. So we've got all the parts we need for the animation. However, it's not very convincing. The question is, what is it about this animation that doesn't make it look really like a bouncing ball? And that's what we'll take a look at now. So the best place to start working with, uh, now that I've got my keys on uh, the sphere, the best place to start working with the uh, spacing of this animation would be in the graph editor. And as you already know, you can access the graph editor by going to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And here we'll see our Translate Y animation representing the up and down of the sphere, the bounce of the ball. And we can start looking at why it doesn't look very convincing. Now, to make this a little bit easier to uh, illustrate for you, I'm actually going to close my Graph Editor. And I'm going to come over here in my front viewport to Panels layouts and I'm going to do a two panes side by side layout. That way I can have my perspective window here and then I'll make this panel my graph editor. So I'll go to the panels panel graph editor. Now we can look at what's happening with the animation here and we can look at the uh, animation curves here. In addition, I can switch between the two where we can look at the animation in this case in our perspective window. And then we can switch over here to the graph editor very easily. So the problem with our bouncing ball animation right now is that it feels more like a yo-yo. It comes down, hits the ground, uh, but as it comes down to the ground, you'll see that it's slowing down. We've got the slow in and we've got the slow out here. So let's see how we can get rid of that. 
One way, of course, is we select the animation curve and then we can use the linear button here. And that will get rid of all the slow in, slow out on our animation. And now if we play it, let's see if we get a better result. Okay, this isn't really an improvement upon it because now it's simply moving at a constant speed. Uh, it got rid of the slow in, slow out here where it hits the ground, so that's good. But in fact, we do want the slow out here at the top as it starts to fall. And we do want the slow in here where it comes back up to its peak. So let's see how we can introduce that into our animation. Uh, I'm going to select these two keys here at the beginning and the end of my animation. And I'm going to flatten out those tangents using the uh, flatten tangent button here. And this starts to look more like what we want with a bouncing ball. We've got the slow out, it'll speed up, it'll hit the ground abruptly, it'll come out quickly, and then it'll come back up here to its peak where it'll start slowing down again. So let's take a look at that animation, see how it looks. And yes, this is looking a lot better. We can still improve upon this, however, and let's take a look at how we can do that. Uh, I'm thinking as I watch this ball bouncing, as it hits the ground, I like how it's hitting it abruptly here and how it's coming out quickly, but I think that we could actually push that further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that keyframe. Let's zoom in and take a look at the um, tangents here. Uh, I think that we want these tangents to be even steeper, sharper than they currently are. So I'm going to grab one of these handles here and I'm going to use my mouse button, my middle mouse button, to move this handle and make it steeper. We're going to run into a little problem here though. Let's take a look at what happens. So when I grab that, you'll notice it works on this side. This side's looking good, but the problem is it's affecting this side as well. I want this side to be more or less a mirror of this side here. So let's see, I'll select that handle and try to move that, but oh, I'm still running into the same problem. Now it's happening on this side. So what can we do about that? Well, if we select the key, we can use this button right here called the break tangents button. And by selecting the break tangent button, you'll notice that the handle changed. Uh, it broke this tangent now, so that if I grab this handle and middle mouse drag, you notice I can move it independently of this other side here. So now we can really fine tune this and get it exactly as we want. So here, we'll try this to really get these steep. I'm hoping that you're noticing this is going to be a little bit of a problem here because I've overshot this, this uh, position here on this keyframe as well as here. Let's see what it looks like. You can see there's a little bounce there at the top at the peak. Let's fix that. We'll just fine tune this so that it doesn't overshoot that key there and it doesn't overshoot it on this side as well. And I'm thinking that should be pretty good. Let's take a look at our animation now. And now we have a nice bouncing ball. Uh, it has some nice hang time up here when it gets up to its peak. It comes down, it gets faster, 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 hits the ground, bounces out quickly. So this has been an example, therefore, where um, we want our animation curve to do different things at different uh, parts of the animation. Uh, if we go back to the graph editor 
you can see that we in places need to have the slow out and the slow in. In other words, here and here, we need the slow out and we need the slow in. But here, we don't want the ball anticipating that it's going to hit the ground. We want it to get faster and faster and faster, hit the ground, bounce out quickly, uh, and then slow down as it reaches its peak again. Now, there is another tool that we can take a quick look at uh, that will also help you visualize what is happening in our animation. And I'm going to go to my perspective window to illustrate this. Uh, what I'll do, you'll notice I'm in the animation uh, menu set here, and I will go to visualize. And I'm going to select ghost selected. Now, if I play my animation, you'll see that what we get is something like a series of drawings. Let's scrub through this and take a look at it as well. So up here, you can see that we have our sphere. If I scrub in here, let's say to frame uh, six as an example, uh, you'll see that these blue spheres indicate the frames before our current frame of frame six, and these red spheres indicate the frames that are going to follow frame six, in other words, seven, eight, and nine. And what you'll notice is uh, that these are much closer together and these are further and further apart. In fact, if we go all the way to where it hits the ground, you'll notice that it's traveling more space over each frame. In other words, going faster and faster. Uh, if we look at where it bounces out, you'll notice that they start to overlap one another. Uh, as it bounces back up, you'll notice it moves very quickly, but then as it starts to reach its peak, the spheres get closer and closer together, indicating uh, that it is moving more slowly. When you don't want to ghost your object any longer, simply return to Visualize and select Unghost Selected or Unghost All if you have multiple objects being ghosted. Uh, I'm going to turn on the ghosting one more time, actually, because I just want to reemphasize one point, and that's that. Uh, in these past uh, few videos, we've been talking about the timing, and the timing in this case for this bouncing ball refers to uh, its keyframes, where it's <clears throat> been keyed on frame 0, 12, and 24. Spacing refers to how it gets from frame 0 to frame 12. So when we're talking about spacing, uh, we're talking specifically about um, this motion and how it's getting faster and faster and how the spacing is becoming greater in between uh, each one of these keyframes, indicating that this ball is speeding up as it falls to hit the ground. So that's just a quick distinction uh, so that you fully understand what we mean by timing and spacing in terms of animation. I hope this video has been useful for you and thank you for watching.